say about his transition from style of play and using his athleticism early to using his IQ more so in picking his spots now? Uh, when you got a basketball mind and, and, a, and a high IQ about the game, uh, then it's a lot easier for you to make the transition. Uh, you look at D-Wade, uh, you look at Vince, you know, these are guys who are super, super superior when it comes to athleticism, but because of their mind, they're able to transition and still be productive. So uh, that's how you kind of look at it. How happy, I mean, I know he's one of your best guys, but how happy are you that this is actually going to happen? Uh, I'm happy that we was able to keep him away from everybody else. And I'm, I mean, it's a guy, I mean, come on, man. It's like one of my best friends. So, you know, uh, it's like, uh, it's kind of like when you start school and, uh, you know, you walk into the classroom, you're not quite sure who your classmates is. And when you walk in there, one of your best friends is in there. You're like, oh, yeah, this is going to be fun. It's going to be a good class. So uh, it's the type of feeling I got. When Howard's story came out, you know, two years ago about just the idea that the four of you could one day play together on the same team, did, did you really think that, that either that would come together or that you would even get a real chance to play with one of them? Like uh, I had a lot of hope of it. And uh, obviously, there's a lot of speculations throughout the summer with Melo. Um, and, and possibly him joining us, and uh, you know, obviously we see how that panned out. But you know, I'm, you know, we're blessed as a franchise to be able to have a player of the caliber of D Wade, um, you know, join us. So uh, it's exciting. When you left Wayne, was there ever we're going to do this again someday? Did that in 14? Did that come up? Did you have that talk with him? Or no, no, um, talk didn't come up. But uh, you know, over the course of over time, I think. You know, even with the story coming out, you know, when Howard, you know, made that story, you know, we always, it would be an unbelievable you know, opportunity. We all got an opportunity to play together. But, you know, obviously right now, you know, myself and D-Wade are back and, uh, you know, along with the rest of these guys. So, you know, it should be um, a pretty dynamic piece. You, you spent a week with him uh, in, in L.A. Um, how does he look? How do you think he fits on the floor here with you guys? Um, well, he adds another, obviously, another championship DNA. Um, another guy with high basketball IQ, um, and another playmaker that can make plays and also make shots, and uh, um, you know, so that adds to our that adds to our depth, and we were already, you know, uh, you know, pretty deep. So, you know, it adds even more depth and uh, even more playmaking to our to our team, which uh, obviously you guys saw last year. You can still do. Numbers wise, is in the Miami years were some of the best of both of your careers. Last year, Chicago wasn't the most efficient for him. Do you think he can get back to that efficiency that you guys had together? Um, he... Yeah, I think so. I think it's just because of the guys that we have playing around him. Um, you know, he doesn't have to worry about ever seeing a double team. He doesn't have to ever worry about, you know, taking tough shots. None of us. None of us have to take or make tough shots. I mean, we have to make tough shots, but we don't have to take them. We got, too many, we got a lot of options. Uh, there should be a lot of guys uh, getting open shots or just, uh, you know, late contested shots. So. You know, efficiency has always been a huge part of, of myself and D-Wade, and, uh, and uh, I know he uh, didn't like the way how he wasn't as efficient as he know he can be or has been throughout his career last year. What is it about that relationship that makes him so good? Why do you compliment him so well and the other way around? Uh, I don't know. I think it's just the whole honesty thing. When you can be honest with somebody no matter what's going on and, uh, and your games translate, then it's, uh, it works very easily. So. You know, he tells me when I F up, and I tell him the same thing. And we get on each other. We've always been like that, uh, especially the four years that we played with one another. He, and even before that, when we just used to text. You know, I watch his games and tell him things he could have did better, and vice versa. So, um, you know, it's just just a brotherhood that we have. Brian, during your time in Miami, you guys were known for the spectacular alley-oops. Should we expect to see more of that uh, this year here in Cleveland? Um, I'm still athletic. <laughs> and I think he still can pass, so <laughs> <laughs> expect it. Did you have to did you actually have to recruit him? Is that how you would yeah. characterize the, yeah. the conversation? Yeah. I mean, because at the end of the day it's still a you know, we're gonna be brothers no matter what. But this is a this is a you know, professional decision. This is his business that he has to worry about in his his career. So there's a lot of teams and a lot of guys reaching out to him, so you know, I couldn't feel entitled, you know, to you know, just because he's a and I talked to him, you know, every day. You know, I didn't have no entitlement about that. It's, you know, still, you know, wanted to get him comfortable and let him know how he could help us and, you know, and things of that nature. So, you know, I guess it worked something. How did you sell Dwayne when you talked to him? To recruit him? I ain't no selling. I ain't no sell. Just tell him how, uh, what we about here, 
and uh, you know how you can help our ball club and you know, how much we can you know how much we can benefit and how much he can benefit from being you know us all being together. So um, you know, it wasn't all me. It was also the front office and. I know T. Lou talked to him about you know ways he's seen us we can you know we can use him and, and utilize his ability. So um, I just did my part. It didn't make sense for him to come here financially last summer. Chicago could offer him, but if you look back, I don't know if you had him last year, you wonder what type of difference that could have made. No, no, I'm not a if guy. You know. So you can't think about the ifs, you just worry about the president and uh, see ways you can do better. I know you don't, you sell time, I'm not a GM, but you mentioned Carmelo a little bit ago. Were you disappointed at all that he didn't come here? They theoretically had the opportunity to get him. Um, no, I mean, you know, from a friend perspective, you know, I wish he would have came and we could have worked some things out. But um, at the end of the day, I think our front office has done a great job. And, you know, either the Knicks failed or we failed. It just didn't work out, you know, and the, it worked out for the Thunder. So, like I said, I've been pretty much, you know, I've been pretty much even killed this summer. And, uh, you know, I wish he would have been here. It would have been great to have him. You know, I love Melo's game. I love D-Wade's game. I love CP's game. You guys know how I feel about those three. And, uh, but, you know, you know, that doesn't take anything away from what we got in that locker room, which is a lot. And uh, I look forward to continue to grow with these guys, especially the new guys. Why do you think you and Wayne are so close? What was it? I don't know. I don't know. It's just organic, man. It's not forced. It's not. It's just organic. Two more. I said yesterday that you're just happier. That it seems to me that you're just that you're just happier this year, and that was before (laughs) Wayne. Yeah. Um, you you agree with that? And what what do you think? I mean, you said your kids kind of fired you up this summer to get back at it, but what do you think it? Just what do you think that happiness stems from? I don't know. Um, I guess you know, just miss playing ball, I guess, or opportunity that I have to lead a, a franchise once again, you know, and take guys to measures that they haven't been before. And hopefully I can try to take myself to places I haven't been before. And that's why I've been, you know, training as much as I have, you know, over the last three months. So, um, you know, just enjoying your life. I mean, it's, it's a wonderful time. I mean, it's 90 in September in Cleveland. I mean, how could you not be happy? One more. LeBron, how are the dynamics of this team different than the one you had last year with all the moving pieces and parts of the I mean, obviously, we had just so many guys come in and come out, either from signing guys or for guys getting injured and guys being in and out of the lineup. And, you know, JR got hurt early on. Kyrie didn't start the season uh, to begin with, obviously, because of the knee. Um, you know, we signed some guys uh, late in the season as well, brought in guys. Uh, but I think for the most part, uh, you know, after, after, you know, the – front office and those guys decide, you know, what's going to happen with the 15-man roster or whatever the case may be, but these will be the guys that we're going to have. I mean, we have, these are the guys from right now, these are the guys that you probably see all year, so uh, it allows us to jail, it allows us to, you know, you guys always hear me talk about, you know, chemistry and team camaraderie and how important, you know, rhythm and things of that nature is, so, you know, we have, you know, obviously there will be some things that happen throughout the course of the season that you can't, you know, you can't, uh, can't worry about it, you can't affect, but things that we can't control, uh, we should be in a pretty good position. Um, just, you know, working on our defense, you know, trying to get everybody on the right page. Um, offensively, you know, getting a lot of, you know, moving guys, cutting guys, slashing, um, having some great guys who move without the ball. So um, just looking at some different things offensively and defensively. Are you able to notice things that you're impressed with or not impressed with? Yes. <laughs> um, you know, offensively, just like I said, the movement, the movement, guys cutting and slashing um, gives us a different look, especially when LeBron has the ball in his hands, Kevin, you know, gives us different options, um, keeps guys occupied while they go to work. How do you go about putting together a lineup? What do you mean? Like, you know, you're going to have directly 12, 13 guys. How do you go about figuring out the combination? Uh, just it's gonna be it's gonna be some work, you know. But it's gonna be a process, and just trying to figure out um, who's the most comfortable with who. Um, but you know, I think you know we got a lot of guys who have a high basketball IQ, so they can play together. So just trying to figure out the you know, rotations from that standpoint. But they all know how to play the game, and um, the, the good players that we have, they can make a lot of you know a lot, a lot of guys look better. So 
we'll just see how it all fits. Can you envision any scenario where JR would not be your starting two guard? What do you mean, can you envision? Huh? What do you mean? If anyone else were to come along later on in camp, is there any, is JR your locked in starter two, or is that up for debate depending on who else arrives this week? Well, right now, JR is our starter, yeah. And later? Later if what? If anyone else comes to camp? So when Wade if you came to camp, JR's our starter, but yeah. But, but if Dwayne shows up, is JR still a starter? I can't talk about Dwayne. That's why you know, I said, is there yeah. any Well, I don't know. Right? I don't know. I don't know. I was trying to phrase it. I thought you wanted to play a little bit. No, no, oh, okay. Please. No. <laughs> you work for the, the Athletic. I thought you might try to play a little bit. <laughs> I'm not going to discuss it, Joe. You'll have guys coming later. You have JR and your starter. Yeah. That's a lot. A lot of talent in that one position. I mean, what kind of challenge? We talked a little bit yesterday. But what kind of challenge? Well, is if you, if you come to a situation where you know you want to win and um, your whole goal is to win a championship, everyone has to sacrifice. So you know, if you want to win, and you're really about winning. You got to sacrifice, and you know, there's gonna be a lot of guys in that position, which is a great problem to have. You know, um, but. You know, if we play the way we're capable of playing, you know, the minutes are going to be sporadic. depends on who's playing well, how things are going. But, you know, like I said, it's going to be my job to make sure we get all the people clicked on the right cylinders, the right rotations, the right combinations. Shy, obviously there's a lot of, play, you know, good players on this team. Also a lot of different personalities. How do you go about managing the personalities? Um, like I always have. Just being direct, you know, telling the guys the truth. Um, that they respect it a lot. Even though they don't want to hear it or listen to it, you know, the next day they'll be like, you know what, you were right. You know, I can respect that. So if you tell guys the truth, they can, they can, you know, they might be upset about it initially, but they'll get over it. Not specific to your team as much as Dwayne the player. We talked a little bit after he turned 30, how he had to change his game a little bit. Focusing less on athleticism, trying to get him to where he needs to be and more on IQ and picking his spots. You have a former guard who also had to go through similar transitions. How do you feel that applies even further into his career in, in terms of using IQ over it was? Well, we know he has a very big IQ. You know, um, you don't win, you know, three championships and, and being a, a perennial all-star without having IQ. But um, for me, I think he's, he's, he's great because he's a playmaker. He can make plays, you know, knows how to play the game. And, um, you know, just having a you know, a guy like that is it, it, be spectacular. But we don't know what's going to happen right now, so we'll see what happens. Welcome, Coach. Thank you. The, the lineup thing. How much? How you talked about defensive emphasis yesterday. Is that an emphasis when you're picking up? You know, deciding those with wing positions. Well, you would hope so. Um, that would be the focus. But you know, we got we got a team that you know we have a lot of different personnel. Um, a lot of guys can play a lot of different positions, offensively and defensively. So, I mean, it's gonna be a work in progress. So, we just gotta just you know keep working at it, keep trying to find the right combinations, and I'm pretty sure we'll figure it out. Ty, with the depth you have on the team, how does the rotations change and or minutes change? We'll see. I don't know yet. We'll see.